Alright, so whether you're a student or about to become a student at university, the chances are that you are, at some point in your academic journey, going to need to read research papers. Now, these are really important for supplementing your own knowledge and your own interest, and also for supporting your own research. So, in this video, I thought I would put together some tips that I picked up during my time at university, studying for an astrophysics and a space engineering degree, and share that with you so that you can hopefully apply some of it to your own research to your own academic journey and get some sort of value from this. Okay, so the first thing you want to do before reading a paper is to first ask yourself why. Why am I reading this paper or why am I reading this set of papers? Now your answer will typically fall into one of three categories. You could either be new to a field and you're trying to understand the topics that are contained within the field, you're trying to get a broader understanding of the field itself. The second is that you are looking for background information and background knowledge for your own research. And the third is that you already have sort of a very established research and you're looking for specific information. Most students will fall into either this category or this category. Uh, and that's because you're either new to the field, so you don't really have much information, much knowledge on the field itself. Um, and this is maybe for first years or second years when you're just sort of in the, in the learning phase of your degree. And then you've got the background, and this is typically for sort of third year research projects or for uh, masters or for PhDs. And in these, you were doing your own research, so you're looking for supplementing papers that can sort of give you a, a broader understanding for your own research and to also support your introduction, your literature reviews. So as a student, you're either going to be new to a field or looking for background information for your field. Now, there is obviously the chance that you are looking for specific information as a student if you know what you're looking for and you know what you're going after. In that case, you will want to look for specific information, but for the most part, as a student, you're in these two categories. So now that we understand what our motivation is for reading a research paper, we now want to ask four main questions when it comes to actually reading the research paper. The first is that we want to know what the author's motivation is. Then we want to know what the author did. Then we want to know what the results show. And finally, we want to ask where does this research or how does this research fit within the wider field? Okay, now luckily, most papers are set up in a way where we can answer all of these questions by looking at the different sections within the paper. So the author's motivation, that is typically found in the abstract or the introduction. The what did they do question, that's pretty obvious, that's from the method. Uh, the what did they show is from the results and how did the research fit within the wider sort of field, that is from the discussion. See, you can look through a paper and you can find out all of this information from these sections and depending on which question you're most interested in having answered at a specific time, you can go through these four different questions and find the, uh, the section that is most relevant to them. Now an easy mistake to make would be to sort of look at this and say, well, if I want to know what the author showed, then I should first read through the motivation, understand what they did, and then find out what they showed. And that would mean you'd have to read through the abstract introduction method and then the results in that order to get that sort of context. But you don't want to read papers in the same way that you read books from start to finish. There is actually an optimized way to read a paper and an order that best allows us to understand what the author is trying to show. And that order is this. You first want to start, as you'd expect, with the abstract. Now the abstract gives you sort of a very broad uh, context of the research, pretty broad understanding of what the research covered and some key results that came out of the research. Once you've read the abstract, and that typically comes first, you then want to read the introduction. Now the introduction is slightly different to the abstract in that it doesn't really give much information about the the results of the research itself, but rather it gives a broad introduction to the motivation behind the research and a broad introduction to the wider field itself. Now, once you've read the introduction, and so far this looks pretty normal because this is the sort of chronological order of the paper, 
But once you've run, read the introduction, the next thing you want to read is actually the conclusion. Now, the reason you want to read the conclusion next is because the conclusion gives a lot of information about the results and the methods and, and the actual research itself that happened in the paper without having to go through and sort of dig all that information up from the main body of the paper. But once we've read the conclusion, this isn't really enough to get a very deep understanding of a topic. And once you've read a conclusion, you then want to start going back into the main body of the research itself and trying to pick out the more nuanced and nitty gritty information. So it may be easy to think that you want to then go into the methodology because you want to find out what the researcher did. But I actually find that it's better to go into the results. And the reason for that is because this can actually give context for the methodology. So by looking at the results before the methodology, you actually get to understand what the researchers have found and then you can sort of work backwards a lot easier than it is to work forwards. But once you've read the results, you can then go back, read the methodology to see how the research was done, how they actually uh, managed to get to those results. And a lot of the time, uh, this will give you a, a pretty broad context for uh, replicating the results if you need to. And in cases like astrophysics, where a lot of the research is done sort of programmatically and you do it on your laptop, your computer, you can also go back and find the data that the researchers had, if it's sort of publicly available, and replicate the method to see if you get the same results. But once you've read the method, you may think that this is it then. You've got sort of the discussion and the results, the conclusion, introduction, um, the abstract and the method. But another important thing to look at right at the end is the references. And that's because if you're interested in this topic or if you are looking for uh, papers for your own research, this is where you find them. The references will contain all of the information, all of the other papers that the, the, re uh, the researcher or the author of this paper used. And so you can use those yourself to further deepen your understanding of the topic. Now, the next piece of advice kind of follows on from this order that we've just discussed reading papers in, and that is to do something called a three pass approach. This is something that I found particularly useful because as you can imagine, it breaks down reading papers into three separate passes. And depending on what you want to get out of reading the paper, you can go as far through these passes as is necessary. So the three passes we break it down into are sort of the, the broad or basic pass, the key points pass, and the detailed pass. We first start with pass number one. This should only take about five to 10 minutes to do. And in this pass, we want to look at the title. We want to look at the abstract and introduction and the conclusion. We also want to look at sort of the headings and the subtitles, um, just again, to get a very broad understanding of what the paper contains. Again, this should only take about five to 10 minutes. And in most cases, you want to move on to keep the key points to the second pass, but this should give you a broad understanding of what the paper contains. So when we move on to the key points, this is where we want to look at more, more depth into the introduction and the abstract. But we also want to look at the figures. We want to look at the uh, results. And then we want to sort of skim through the discussion and pick out any key points, as the name suggests. We do this by looking at any areas that are in bold or italic or are particularly highlighted within the research. And a lot of the times you'll find that information is. Uh, scientists and researchers will put key points in bold or italics to emphasize those points. And so we want to make sure that we're reading those in this pass. In this pass as well, it's also useful to make some rough notes on the key points. Now, this is because we want to sort of get our own understanding of the of the paper up and we can refer back to these notes later on. And finally, we go to the third pass, and this is where we go into a really detailed look of the, the paper. We want to read the method in a, a lot of detail. We want to look at all of the tables and the figures and we also want to 
look at the results and try to get to those results if we can. And this includes doing some calculations or running through some data analysis and seeing if we can replicate those results. And this is where we really want to try and be as uh, stringent as possible uh, when reading the paper and to really scrutinize the methodology itself. So although this is how I would recommend going through a, a research paper, going through in these three passes or in that order that we discussed earlier, there's more to understanding the content of a research paper than just the order in which we read it. The first thing I'd recommend in this situation and, and just in general for, for research and for science is be critical. So why do we want to be critical when reading a paper? Well, the first reason is that no matter how reputable a journal or author is, there's always the chance that there is a mistake in the paper. Now, this is very rare, but it's important to have that critical thinking skill to be able to analyze information that has been told to you and to determine whether that makes sense or not. And if it doesn't make sense, then you've got two options. The first is that for whatever reason, you may think that something is wrong in a paper and you turn out to be right, in which case you've got pretty much got another paper to write, uh, disproving the one you've just read. But more often than not, it means that you've got a gap in your knowledge. And this being critical allows you to uh, see where those gaps are and to try and build them up. Sort of following on from this point is to discuss and summarize the paper. Research papers are oftentimes very complicated pieces of work. And there's a lot of information in there that you may find really difficult to understand that someone else finds pretty easy and vice versa. And so having a group that you can go to to discuss the contents of papers allows you to form a much better knowledge base of the research itself and also how that fits into your research. A lot of the time when I'm discussing research with some of my peers and friends, I pick up a lot of, of conclusions from the paper that I wouldn't have thought of myself because other people have got different ways of thinking than I do. And so being able to see those different perspectives allows me to broaden my understanding, to broaden my opinions and to broaden my, uh, my ability to look at a paper and to understand what the contents are. The final piece of advice I'd give is to reflect on how this research paper that you're reading fits into your current understanding or your current research within the field. If you are just new to the specific field, then you want to evaluate how this uh, paper uh, expands your knowledge and what new concepts you've learned from this paper. This can be helped along by summarizing the paper as in the previous uh, point and a lot of the times you can make notes on papers and sort of form your own textbook based on recent research papers and if you're making your own research paper and you're, and you're sort of forming your own research reflect on how this agrees or disagrees with the results that you are getting or the methods that you are working towards you can then sort of look at a broad number of papers and sort of see what the consensus of your field is. Are there more papers that agree with you or more papers that disagree with you? And why is that? And what can you change about your research that sort of allows you to fit into this uh, field a lot better? So those are the main tips and techniques that I picked up during my two degrees at university, going through sort of three main research projects. Now, obviously, I've not done a PhD, I'm not a researcher, and I'm not doing a postdoc or anything above that. But hopefully, if you are a new student, or you are a student going into your third year or into your master's year, you can use some of the advice that I've given in this video and apply it to your own research projects. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.